So he ran into Murtala, and Murtala was inspector of signals at the time. And MKO was like, you know, you guys are owing us money, man. <laughs> and with Murtala was like, there was a particular quote. Murtala said, who the hell are you? I'll kill you. And then MKO said, if you touch me, I'll beat the hell out of you. Poor hey you guys, listen, this, this is, he's going against someone that had just led a coup. Some people describe this, at least you describe this as almost suicidal. He's going up to this man telling him that you guys owe us money. Yes. Um, MKO was a very, very, very bright guy from the start. Like the guy went to school. That was the one thing that he focused on. He was he was like a really, really, really astute student to the point that he was able to earn himself a scholarship. And he went to the UK, right? I think it was University of Glasgow. Yes, it was UK. Yeah, it was Glasgow. Yeah. In the UK. Yeah. Glasgow, um, Scotland. Yeah. You're the University of Glasgow. And he went and he studied accounting. And he was really good. He was really good at this stuff. But then he moved back. Now, before he moved back, I think they had, he. that was when he met his first wife, right? Symbiat? Uh, yes. He yeah. got married and came back with the family to Nigeria. Yeah. And I think they had two kids at the time. He came back to the family yeah. in Nigeria. I think this was right around, if not maybe right before or around the uh, the Biafra War, which started in 1967. Uh, oh, yeah, no. just a few years, a few years before. before. Yes, a few years before that, um, he had kind of worked his way. He he started off working at one company. He moved up to another company, and he eventually ended up at ITT. Um, and for those wondering, it's the same ITT fellow I was talking about in ITT, International TV. International TV. Yes. <laughs> it's the same ITT, yes. Um, and which is which was a telecommunications um, company at the time. And during the war, they needed a, uh, they needed com- comms devices, communication devices. So they had reached out to ITT and um, MQO, he wasn't a, he wasn't the the boss or anything but he he was one i guess he was one of their sales people perhaps he he worked there and please akemi correct me if i say anything wrong uh he worked yeah, of course i'm listening yeah he worked there and he basically had gone to you know get the funds for the communication devices that he had sold the military at the time and he had run into this one guy who who was a like a, a rising military military figure um, at the time? He was the inspector of signals at the time. Yes. Yes. And 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 I'm, I look. I all this is sourced from Akiemi's article. So if I get anything wrong, <laughs> <laughs> don't blame me, blame Akiemi. But it was it was the inspector of signals who happened to be this young guy called Murtala Mohammed, the person that our famed airport is named after um the some, man on the 20 naira note yes yes the man on the 20 naira note um some people have i've heard th- i've heard this argument before and i don't know what you think about it but some people have argued that he may have been our most benevolent dictator that we ever had um uh, there is a white watch episode on Muritala Mohammed oh, and really? he's the most he's the most white watched person in nigeria and post-colonial history interesting interesting he was he happened to be the one that had led the coup at the time the previous coup so the way the way i describe uh marita la mohammed is just towards uh genocidal maniac wow okay interesting so but for some reason he his history was whitewashed to make him look like he was a hero of sorts I, I guess because he, from what I heard, he had done a lot to kind of clean up a lot of the corruption when he came in at the time, right? So, people, what people confuse for clean up corruption was really the most the most fraudulent and unfair uh, miscarriage of open court justice in Nigeria. So, instead of resolving the problem, he just fired people at will. 
you mm. don't support us, you are fired. It's it was just it just came and it just cleared people. And instead of instead of going through the proper procedure or admitting that some of those firings were wrongly done, they just grouped everybody on that tag corruption. You know, we want to clear corruption. But that really wasn't what happened. But I mean, Nigerians went with it and the story stuck. Interesting. Interesting. It's funny because he's still beloved among some people in, in, in some, some circles in Lagos. But that's a, that's a series for another day. You know, I'm hoping we can talk about all, <laughs> all of the series that you have. Cause, but moving on to this. He, so he ran into Murtala. And Murtala was inspector of signals at the time. And MKO was like, you know, you guys are owing us money, man. <laughs> and with Murtala was like, there was a particular quote. Murtala said, who the hell are you? I'll kill you. And then MKO said, if you touch me, I'll beat the hell out of you. MKO, you see, <laughs> there, was this, there was this running theme in MQ where he was just this stubborn guy that he... Like he, he he put his mind to something he was gonna get his way. He was going to get yeah. He was just he was just and th- and this is keep in mind for you guys listen this is, this is he's going against someone that had just led a coup. Some people describe this at least you describe this as almost suicidal. He's going up to this man telling him that you guys owe us money. Yes. And a, at that point, although Marichala was minister was, was inspector of signals, but at that point he was practically the person controlling the Yakubu Gon administration. He would go on missions as a as, as an officer wow. without informing his superiors. And he would sometimes he would just stomp into uh, federal executive council meetings without wow. invite and there would be no repercussions. So that was the person MK Abela was saying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if you beat <laughs> if you touch me, I'll beat the hell out of you. And, and so yeah, that was that was what balls on you. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and and keep in mind these guys were young. These guys were in the thirties. At least MQ was yeah. in his thirties at this time. Which is funny because yeah. you look at it like these guys were running society at the time. They were in their thirties. And you look, you compare it to today where it's like it's the same people from those people that are still running society. They haven't they haven't even given up any ounce of power. It, it, it's it's unfortunate, but that's that's a, another story for another day. So he goes up to this guy and tells him and pretty much insists until to the point that they, they kind of respect him for his for the balls that he had. Like this guy really really walked up to us and is demanding his money. I think he eventually got it, right? They eventually relinquished. Yeah, those he did. Funds. He did. <laughs> um, and, but, but, that, but that wasn't where it ended, man. MKO was, he was, the way he got into power at ITT is, is very, very controversial. You know, we all just assumed he just rose up the ranks and that wasn't the case. This man finessed his way into power. Is that fair to say, Akiyemi? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it was it was a really. I think depending on who is narrating it, it's 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 not what it did was not criminal, right? It no, was it wasn't. Just, it wasn't. It was just a, a moral a moral uh, situation. Morally so questionable. It morally right. Or yes. Was it morally wrong. Yes. Which is why so, I said. Yeah. Which is why I said he finessed. <laughs> if you notice, I if you notice, <laughs> yeah. I didn't use the word conned because conned yeah. is what I would naturally use. But I'm like, okay, to be fair, he finessed his way. Into-